So um, thank you very much. Um, I think we've had a lovely lunch, so a lot of food in our stomach. So hopefully for the next half an hour, there will be some food for thought that we could share with you. Um, and uh, my next two speakers are extremely competent and, and would love to share their ideas also. So we would like to start with this. So consider this. The most common form of evil is inaction. So my friends, inaction is also a choice. From the life-altering to the mundane, we make choices every day, right? We can put a man onto the moon, we choose tea over coffee. Our choices define who we become. And yet, it is this word that we remove from our children's vocabulary. Not for one day, not for one month, not even for a year. But for 15 years of their formative lives, we tell them, you have no choice but to listen to what I have to tell you. And then we wonder why they don't become empathetic or responsible or creative or informed. They also no wonder then that the mindset after 15 years of understanding that you have no choice, we gradually become bystanders to life rather than active participants. And the mindset shifts from this. So any problem that we encounter, we are now going to be saying, well, it's the government's job. This is the way it has always been. Uh, what can one person do anyway? In fact, yesterday when we saw Laurie's video, we said, had this girl say, what can I do? I'm just one person. And the best one we always say is, well, I've given money. So that about kind of finishes uh, my choice. Well, this is why we're here, right? Um, we are here in a conference called Make a Difference. So I'm hoping at least the 1,200 people that are here at this conference are asking this fundamental question. How can I go from saying, can I make a difference, to I can make a difference? Um, I'm a designer by profession, so I would like to share with you the framework that I have used over the past several years about how do you shift the mindset from the can I to the I can. And it's a very simple four-step process. It gets children to go from feel, imagine, do, and share. And this, when used very mindfully, can really make that shift. So let me take you through a little bit about what the feel is. The feel really is the, is the empathetic concept of putting yourself into the situation, saying, what is it that bothers me so much that I am willing to do something about it? There are 7 billion people on the planet. There are 7 billion problems. There will be 7 billion solutions. Except for natural calamities, every problem is human created. Every solution, therefore, is human created. So all you have to do is find the one thing that stirs you enough. Uh, what I've often heard from people is, but there's just so many issues that need to be solved. The problem is, again, when you see there are too many issues, we often say, ah, oh, I can't do anything about it. There's poverty and there's global warming, there's child abuse, there is uh, inequity. What can I change? Well, you can start by changing what bothers you. Um, and also understand a couple of things. If you say, for instance, you take the issue of garbage and that bothers you, garbage is not the problem. That is one of the problems, but the people who deposit the garbage in those places and the mindsets and human behaviors, that becomes a real problem. So the feel in the design thinking structure really gets you to understand what the real problem is. Otherwise, we go about solving the wrong problems and then we say, see, I told you change doesn't happen. It's the government's job. Once you locate something that bothers you, it could be bullying. It could be, for instance, there are children in Turkey saying running in the corridors is bothering them. There's somebody in Taiwan saying uh, tribal culture and it's dying. That's bothering them. People in, in India are saying, my God, heavy school bags. That's bothering us. So they're taking little things that bother them personally. It's not necessarily global warming, right? So take something that bothers you. Once you've located what stirs you enough, go to imagine. And the imagine is beautiful. And, and remember one thing. The imagine state gets really enriched when you have radical collaboration in the imagination. One person's imagination has a limited scope to look at change. But when you locate at least five different people that can participate in giving perspective to the idea, it becomes richer. So remember in the imagined state, get an anthropologist, get maybe a doctor, get a dancer, get a choreographer to give their ideas about how that solution can actually become long lasting. And then once you have the ability to look at change, go out and do it. Our problem typically lies here. We don't want to do it. We have wonderful couch and you know, armchair sessions about how we can change the world, 
But when the actual action comes to actually doing it, our inaction becomes and takes over. So the do is critical. Another just word of caution, don't worry about fine-tuning the idea. Have a bias towards prototyping. Go out there and test the idea. Because in that test day, you can either do the undo or the redo. And that's a marvelous way because you understand the human patterns a lot more with the do. So have a bias towards the prototyping. So you've got the feel, imagine, do, and then the share. That's brilliant. Because in this structure, you have going from can I to the I can at the do, and then the share is you can too. And that's powerful. In life, we don't share very much. In education, we share even less. It's as if when we share, my God, that's the last best idea I will ever have. I can't get another great idea, so I will not share my idea. Sharing is critical. In sharing, you inspire. And when you inspire by your actions, somebody across the globe can take it and say, oh my God, that's wonderful. I'd like to try that out in my context. So feel, imagine, do, share is a very simple design thinking framework that allows you to go from saying can I to I can. And this is where my story starts. Um, let me introduce you to my son, Rag. He was six years of age, uh, that's my feel, when one day he came back from school with a big red mark across his notebook. I'm sure a lot of us have experienced that. But I think what the teacher didn't realize at that point, that that red mark was not just a mark across the notebook, it was really like a red scar across his psyche. I'm telling you, that day he went to school thinking, I can, and he actually came back believing, I can't. Because here was his adult telling him, he's not good enough. And for me, that was not good enough. Of course, I could just take the route and say, my God, but that's the government's job. They have to do it. They have to look at education. What am I going to do? I'm just one person. Then, the imagine. Let me tell you a little context about India. There are 200 million children that go to school. Only 18% graduate. And out of those 18%, 90% of them are, have got unemployable skills. That means every single year, we are churning out children whose spirits have been crushed by the feeling of helplessness. So something had to be done about it, right? So the imagine was, how do I design an approach to educa education that can get all children to say, I can. I can shape the future. I can add value to it. So, so much, so good. So I had the feel. I had the imagine. Now, I had to do. I had to put my money where the mouth was, right? So in the do, I started Riverside School. So I started Riverside School um, 10 years ago. And very quickly, Riverside became a lab, a lab for prototyping and testing this design process I was talking about, the feel, imagine, do, share. How do you get children to go from being aware, enabled, and empowered? So we designed classroom experiences to get our children to, of course, be excited about math and science and literature, but we also got them sensitive and mindful about empathy, excellence, and engagement. So I'm going to show you a little snapshot of how this becomes common practice at Riverside. These are three tiny stories. One is a story of six-year-olds, that is my grade two students, who've added value and made a difference to the city zoo by designing an audio tour for the new reptile section. The second little snapshot is grade six students, around 11-year-olds, who were working with their differently able buddies and realized that the center needed money for a physiotherapist and physiotherapy equipment. So they went about organizing an auction and made a difference to those lives. And the third story is the older kids, the 15, 16, and 17-year-olds, who have realized one very important message in change. Change takes time. It doesn't happen overnight. So this is a little snapshot of Riverside. Sound, please. These are my grade two. Six years. So do you think... Children can do something for the zoo? Yes. I know the tour. Would you? Yeah, audio tour. Audio tour. Yeah. What is an audio tour? It's like an audio. Huh? And you have to listen. Uh, yeah. You mean, uh, how do you listen? Like, you have to put like, that headphone. Okay, yeah, okay. Yeah. And you're on it. Uh -huh. And uh, some voice will come. And which will guide, guide you. Uh, guide you throughout uh, your tour. Uh, They visited the zoo, they learned all their skills, literacy, math, everything in this process. We have come here because to convince Mr. Sahu that we have made our first draft of audio tour and uh, if he's ready to accept it or not. Prototype. 
and then they launched it on Gandhi's birthday. So these are great six. So they work at paintings with their buddies. Says the gods must hear you. That was just amazing to see that they had done everything. It was just touching, very, very touching. In Key Stage 3, one of the main ideas that we are developing and understanding is the idea of persistence. Um, we adolescents are very quick to change our mind, change our interests, change our passions. But I guess one thing that we've truly learned is that change takes time. It doesn't happen overnight. So persistence, uh, when we persist with an idea for long enough, we can make change happen. Sumanyu is going to give me the um, list of the materials that they need and if we can also get sponsorship. We shall get ready by the website by the end of this week. Okay. And um, we'll get the write-ups from Dimple, Pooja and you. So every Saturday for the last 60 weeks, these children have gone to the cancer ward and worked with the patients there. And it's So this is really making a difference, not only to somebody else's life, but to one's own. So here are children telling us they don't have to be rich or strong or powerful to make change happen. All they have to do is feel. Then imagine a way to make it better and then go out and do it. And then in the sharing, they've been able to inspire other schools and other cities to be able to make a difference. Um, so what does this mean? Embedded in each of these, like every educator will say, oh, all that is very good, but they have to learn quadratic equations. I know they have to learn quadratic equations, but they also have to learn creativity and empathy and design thinking and, and being self-directed as learners because that's what's going to take us into the next generation. And, of course, we had parents who said, okay, making children good human beings all very well. What about math, science, and English? So the approach to education is very clear. When children do good, they also do well. In the last seven years, Riverside has been taking a benchmarking assessment uh, taken by over all the best 2,000 schools in India. And we are outperforming the top 10 schools in math, science, and English. So obviously, we knew this worked, and this approach had to go out. So the other thing that started bothering us was this. No society that loves its children will build more malls over parks, will have roads without cycling paths, and have 250 TV channels rather than safer community spaces. So what is the imagine? How do you imagine something that changes? Imagine a child-friendly city, a city that designs for and nurtures childhood. Because when a city gives to its child, the child will one day give back to the city. So this was an ambitious imagine. We had to go out and, of course, do it. So in 2007, we started Approach which is a protagonist in every child, which basically uh, told the city, you have to not only hear and see the children as creative, not just a nuisance value. How will the student make a child make a mark in the landscape of the city? So I'm going to share with you three small initiatives. One is called Parents of the Park. With the parks now, the children have reclaimed the parks because we have parks, but some of them don't have uh, children in them because they've been told, oh, you cannot play here, you cannot play cricket here, you can't cycle here. So we have parks, but the children are not there in the park. So Parents of the Park was to get the citizens involved in reclaiming childhood for the children in the parks. So every Sunday, the parks become places for childhood. The second is a beautiful initiative called Moving Experience. We approached the best multiplexes in the city and said, listen, you need to open up your hearts and your doors to our children. So every single month, 150 children from the street go to see cinema in the best places and have popcorn in this wonderful theater. And the third, of course, is the most ambitious. It's called Street Smart. Five times in the year, we close down the busiest streets, something like your Causeway Bay, and we convert it into a place for children and childhood. Here is the city coming together. It's all free, it's all inclusive, and it's all collaborative. It's a process which the police have come and the municipal uh, corporations come in, and it becomes everybody's story. So a little glimpse about approach. So this is parents of the park. It's 
all citizen run. Moving experience. The bus is also provided by a citizen. लजगारी में सी फिर ठंडा माहौल में जी फिर यहाँ बाजू पहुँचे यहाँ बाजू जब ये सिनेमा वाले रहा तो तभी दिल खुश हो गया। the first child from the zebra crossing in the world I think this is very unique absolutely first time in Ahmedabad where the city is giving so much space and time for the children I've not seen um, an initiative which is so unusual and which is so caring about the city <laughs> That became the city, uh, the city story, and the last story is really this: How do you now take what happened at Riverside to the world? So the imagine was very simply this: How can all children use design thinking to make a difference? How can they take the feel, imagine, do, share, and actually go out and make a difference to their lives and others? So in 2009, we started Design for Change, and it became the largest movement of change of children using design thinking. It is today in over 37 countries, impacting 25 million children. So, what are our children changing? Right from stopping child marriages to doing organic farming, preserving tribal culture to having organizing an employ employment fair. Children were stopping the bad and making good with the power of their ideas. The three short stories I'm going to show you. One is from Bhutan. Children of uh, age uh, 11 and 12 decided to stop packaged food and then give alternative ideas of how do you um, preserve uh, the gross national happiness index of Bhutan. So much so that their their movement became something that they went to 80 schools and shared. And the king of Bhutan met them. The second story is a beautiful story from Taiwan. It's a story of a child whose friend was uh, visually impaired, uh, Jack. And uh, Jack's friend Tony decided to invite people to meet Jack because Jack became very shy and inhibited. And he said, "Will you let uh, my friend Jack touch your face and become friends?" Um, and that's his story. And the third story is a little village school in India where those children are goat herders and sheep herders, and their parents said, "You cannot go to school. You have to come and help us look after the farm." And what these children did to be able to say, "I need to go to school." So this is the last story. If you think you have an idea, an idea that can make your life, our lives better, then to share this idea with your teacher, work as a team, change the bad, make it good with your ideas. You can. Television. These are children who have never stepped out of the school before.
they met the king. So this is a story from Taiwan. You'll be able to understand. 一直在我身边的你，请让我摸摸你的你的脸。So change doesn't have to be something large and you know glamorous. It could be something as small and intimate as this. 其实我想